What's going on, people? We are Tottenham TV, and we've got a bit of uh, some, something different for you guys today. We are going to be on Club Signing Watch, because Ali Gold put up something uh, the other day, and he said Spurs have made missteps in the previous years with club signings who did not fit the manager's system or were wanted at all. And Johan Lang has been keen to ensure that any player that comes through the door fits the head coach's philosophy and system perfectly, and most of all, are wanted by the manager. So... We're going to go and take a look at every transfer window since 2021, uh, well, 2020 to 2021. And uh, we're going to have a bit of discussion think, and see who we think is a club signing. I want you guys to let us know in the comment section below, um, out of all the transfers that we do talk, who do you think were club signings, who were not club signings? Um, it's going to be interesting to get into this one. Um, so I guess, I guess we'll start with Gareth Bale. Joe Hart, Carlos Vinicius, Joe Roden, Pierre Emohoibia, Matt Doherty, Regulon, and, and yeah, and Regulon. Um, this is pure speculation. Of course, course. it's pure, pure <laughs> speculation, but I guess we'll start off with Gareth Bell, which is an interesting one. We brought in at the twilight of his career on loan for Jose Mourinho. Uh, was he a club signing or not? Definitely. <laughs> I think I think I'm not I don't think Mourinho was there sitting saying I want um an Asian Gareth Bell. Not to say Gareth Bell did badly. I think he did quite well at Tottenham, but I think he was underrated, yeah. Yeah, I think he was fine. I'm not saying that. I'm I and I'm sure it, uh, Mourinho might have okayed it, but I think Bale's was one of these ones we we were trying to get for many years uh, back at Tottenham even on or even on loan or whatever. There's been a lot of discussions and I think Levy pounced at the opportunity uh, when the loan deal came about. I definitely think this was club driven. I don't think it was um, a, a, a signing driven by the manager and what he wanted. I think I don't think it was a case of him um, not want like not wanting him, but I do think it was a case of the club driving the signing for sure. Yeah, I, I do agree. But I think like with the Gareth Bell one and maybe as opposed to other ones. I felt like maybe Mourinho was more on board this one with than maybe some other ones where we'll get into in a minute. Mm. Um, Joe Hart was one that came in, obviously, as a backup keeper. I, I reckon with this one, Mourinho probably would have just said, I want a backup keeper, and then the club presented him Joe Hart, and he was like, yeah, all right, fine. Well, didn't uh, uh, Mourinho said he was the best English keeper still <laughs> yeah. when, uh, when he was manager of time. I think Mourinho actually... Va um, I reckon it was actually a Mourinho signing because... I think he values that kind of experience, that title-winning experience, and I think he probably wanted that in the dressing room. So I reckon, I reckon he pushed for this. I reckon. Really you reckon? Opinion, yeah. I'm not sure if he pushed. Backup, I'm not sure keeper. if I, I buy that he actually went out and pushed for it. But I, I think the club just presented to him, look, you can have Joe Hart as a backup keeper. Do you want him? And he probably said, yeah, all right. Yeah, fair enough. Um, Carlos Vinicius on loan from Benfica. Um, I think it, it was in January, right, that we got Carlos Vinicius. No, no, was, uh, was it in the summer? Hmm. Okay, fair enough. In the summer. Um, this one was 1 million percent a club signing. Yeah. Um, well, we were desperate for a striker, weren't we, to play back up for Kane. Vinicius, I think, had just finished top goal score in the Portuguese league. We were actually yeah. quite excited at the time about the prospect of Vinicius coming to Tottenham, but um, didn't work out, of course. I think... Yeah, I think the fact that it was a loan deal, the fact that he was it was fairly cheap, although he was coming from the Portuguese league, Portuguese league, I think that's probably something that Mourinho knows well. I mean, probably was something pushed by the club, I would assume. One hundred percent a club signing. There's no way Jose Mourinho is saying go out there and get me Carlos Vinicius. <laughs> yeah, he fine. He scored goals in the Portuguese league, but even then, like he wasn't like a mainstay in that Benfica mm. team. I felt like he just he scored a lot of goals coming off the bench and and these kind of things. Like, there is no way. There is no way he was, uh, um, you know, recommended by Jose Mourinho and, and the club went and got him. Mm. The club saw a cheap option and they went to go get him and they were like, here, here's, here's your striker. Definitely. Yeah, you're probably right about that. I think we were linked with a lot of better strikers during that time and then we went on him because he was a cheap loan option. Yeah. Next one is Joe Roden, another club signing, Guaranteed. in my opinion. Um, Mourinho never really fancied him, did he? We wanted Skriniar. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's, that's what we wanted. That's who he was pushing for. <laughs> there was Skriniar, I can't remember who else we were heavily linked with that summer. Skriniar was the one, obviously, um, Hitchin, was, was it, Hitchin was pictured with uh, his agent out in Italy. Um, I think it was that summer. So clearly we wanted Skriniar. We booked at the price. And then after the window closed, when the championship window was still open, went for Roden and definitely that was a club signing for one sure. million one million percent again Joe Roden club signing Pierre Amohoibier 16 and a half million from Southampton with Carl Walker-Peters going the other way um, 
I think this one actually could be um, one that Mourinho wanted. I think so. Albeit, again, it was a deal that we did because he was in the last year of his contract and it was a good, it was a good fee um, for a good player. I definitely reckon Mourinho earmarked him as one of his uh, players that he thinks could, could have been a midfield general. And he did quite well under Mourinho, actually. So I think Mourinho was definitely, um, definitely pushing for this signing, for mm. sure. Matt Doherty from Wolves. What do you reckon? I reckon club signing. I reckon. I reckon. Um, I reckon Reno pushed for it, but I think he got it wrong. I think it was a, well, obviously we're looking for a right back to replace Aurier, mm -hmm. and Doherty had come off a, come off the back of a really good season at Wolves, and also you got to remember that time we were playing this kind of lopsided system where we were playing the right back pushing forward and the left back tucking and Ben Davis forming a back three. And we thought maybe Matt Doherty could actually fill in quite well in that role. Um, at the time, didn't yeah, but we signed out. Regulon in the same summer, though, didn't we? we? Signed Regulon in the same, yeah. See, yeah, I think Regulon was a club signing. I think Matt Doherty was actually signed as a, for a purpose, and then the opportunity of Regulon came about, and we th we thought it was too good of an opportunity to turn down. And we went, and we pushed for it later in the window, if I remember rightly. It was a double deal for Bale. Mm. It's interesting. I reckon to think we, of. we, I, th I reckon Doherty I'm was not actually sure. quite purposeful, and Regulon was actually a club. Who signing. was our other right backs at the time? Aurier and Foyf. Foyf. Well, for, I actually, I think Foyth might have sold that summer. So what, we went into that one season with, with Doherty and Aurier as our mm. right-backs? Because I remember that was the plan, to play this lopsided system. Yeah, and I remember I actually, that. And I actually think Regulon, in a weird way, interrupted those plans because we, we signed him um, and then all of a sudden we had another flying fullback on the other side when ben, it was a plan for Ben Davis to tuck in. And it kind of changed the plans a bit, I feel. I don't know. I mean, yeah, Do Do Doherty on the back of a couple of really good seasons for Wolves, 28 years of age. I remember as well when we signed him how excited we were to get Matt mm. Doherty through the door saying, we got one of the best right backs in the Premier League, blah, blah, blah. Just never don't forget, seemed uh, to materialise. Don't forget Mar uh, January 22 till March 22, that period under Conte when he was like <laughs> one of the best fullbacks in the, uh, in the league for three months. Never forget that period. Do what's called uh, Dolberto Carlos, I'm calling Yeah. Um, but yeah, never really what happened to Tottenham. But I reckon, I reckon he was earmarked by the manager as someone actually who could who could do well in that system, and then it all changed. So you're going for um, Doherty, Mourinho signing, mm. Regulon club signing. That's what I think. Yeah, you reckon? I think I think Regulon wasn't a Mourinho signing. I and I think Regulon was an opportunistic one. I think Regulon was one where we saw that he was available late in the window, and because he's a young left back with high quality, I reckon the club pushed for it. I reckon Mourinho wanted Doherty and and. I wouldn't say he didn't want Regulon, but I reckon... I reckon Mourinho would have liked Regulon and would have wanted Regulon. I'm not saying he didn't want him. I'm just saying I think the club was spearheading that signing and I reckon Mourinho would have suggested Doherty. Well, look, I, I, I really don't know. Like You guys let us know in the comment section below. What do you reckon about uh, Doherty and Regulon? Which one was a club signing and which one was um, a Mourinho signing? Maybe they were both club signings. Maybe they were both Mourinho yeah. signings. But uh, let us know in the comment section below what you think of those ones. Uh, let's go on to the next transfer window, 21-22. This is under Nuno. Um, this is a Brian Hill. That is 100% a club signing. There is, there is no more club signing than a Brian Hill. Look, he only signed because Paratici had good relay. I think well, Paratici was dealing with it at the time. Um, yeah, I don't, I, think, I don't think it's one that... I, you know what? I think that summer... I reckon Nuno had very little involvement at all. I reckon yeah. they're probably all club signings. Yeah, to be I, I completely agree. I don't think. Yeah, I agree. I don't Sar think. guaranteed. Uh, Emerson guaranteed club signing. Although Emerson maybe is is a player that could probably uh, fit the Nuno system, mm. but I still think he's a club signing. Rodrigo Bentancor, we know that. Well, that you know, was in the January. Yeah, him and Kulisevsky came in in January. And I don't. I, I, yeah, I, I agree with you. I don't think Nuno had any say in any of these players. Although in January, though, that was under Conte already. So I reckon Conte would have had some input on but, those signings. But, um, oh yeah, sure, Romero and Kulisevsky, but and uh, Romero came in that summer as well. But all those signings were all due to uh, Paratici's links in, in, in Italy and in Juventus. Mm -hmm. That's, that's yeah. what all those sign signings were about. And I think, I think at that time as well, um, we know that Nuno was what fifth choice or sixth choice manager, right? I think I think we I think Nuno came in knowing uh, as an as an agreement. This is just like my speculation, but this is what I, I reckon happened when Nuno came in. 
I reckon there was an agreement like you're coming in, but we're going to go in a direction where you just give us a, you give us a position you want and the club will work it out kind of thing and and it'll, it'll, it'll be the club pushing forward. I reckon Nuno was kind of under no illusion that he wasn't the first choice and like he's we're not going to basically b- mould a team around how Nuno wants because we didn't really think Nuno was going to be there for long. But it's interesting the change of mentality because Ange Postacoglu also wasn't the first choice of manager coming in, right? He was like second, third or fourth, whatever it may be. But he seems to have a lot more authority than a Nuno. I think the, the character of the managers says a lot about that. And Nuno didn't really have that strong personality where he's going to stamp his authority on the club where Ange does have that. Well, I think the difference as well is I, I never thought that um, we had belief in Nuno that he was going to be a lot. Even when we signed him, no one really believed this guy's going to be here for the long term. But with Ange, it's a bit different. I feel like there's a real belief in his project. Because, i tell you why, because Daniel Levy himself said, you know, we need to get back to the Tottenham way, we need to get back to playing uh, our brand of football. And then we appointed Nuno, which was the complete opposite of that. Mm. And I never thought there was a belief that we were actually going to mould a team in Nuno's image. Whereas Ange, he plays the Tottenham way, so we can actually mould a team in his image. And mm. that's why he probably has a bit more say uh, uh, on that. Let's go to Conte's summer. Um, he signed Clement Longley on loan um, at left centre back, which, you know, we were chasing a left centre back. Bastoni was the one that Conte wanted, isn't it? And then we signed Clement Longley. So I think you can say that's a club signing. I think um, for sure. I think I don't, I don't. I don't know if Conte was one pushing for Longley because he wanted. He it was a big deal to improve that 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 element of the team. I remember, and everyone was saying go for Longley for a year and then we'll sign the real player next season. And obviously Conte was gone by then. Um, but I think the got club, to Ven. Yeah, I mean, uh, we did get. It wasn't the next season, was it? Oh, it was the next season. Yeah, it was. Yeah. But we did get Van de Ven, but. Um, Unfortunately, Conte was already gone. Yeah. Uh, Fraser Forster, free transfer. Again, probably a bit similar to the Joe Hart thing. We needed a backup keeper. The club presented uh, Fraser Forster, mm-hmm. and Conte was just like, yeah, all right. Mm-hmm. I don't yeah. think um, there's too much. Uh, when it when it's sub-goalkeepers, it's, there's not really much in it, is there? Uh, Ivan Perisic, I mean, that's a clear Conte signing. We know that. He played under Conte for a few years. He was brilliant under Conte. He knows the Conte system, so definitely Conte pushed for that one. On out Dan Juma on loan for the season. I mean, that's a clear. Or January, we'll get him gone. Oh, we got him in January. But that's a clear club signing. You know, we signed him in January. We needed firepower, and Conte never used him. So, yeah. um, that's a clear I, club I signing. Think the, I think it was clear by Conte's actions that it was a club signing. I think he was sending a message like, you force this guy on me, and I'm not going to play him, essentially. Yeah. Um, we got. After Conte had gone, we got Pedro Porro on no, loan. No, Porro, he was manager when Porro was, was there. Was Conte there? Yeah, in oh, January. Fair enough. He didn't get sacked in January. Yeah, he? you're right, you're right. Pedro Porro, um, is he... End is, of March. Is he a con- I think, But at this stage, I think Conte was just so disgruntled, was he even in... in like even speaking about transfers. He didn't even know if he was going to be here the following year. I know, but I think in January... Um, it's hard to rewrite history, but if I, if I remember rightly, in January, we were still very much in that top four race. And I think, like, as much as we weren't playing well, we were still getting results fairly regularly. I, remember, I think. Do you think Conte was at that point planning to be here? I don't like, know if he was planning. To, I think it was up in the air for sure at that point. But I reckon you know, this was a Conte signing because he was a wing back and he played a wing back of Sporting, and he was very much a wing back that we wanted because he was one that we know that had that final third contributions. We know how attacking he was at Sporting. I reckon Conte definitely pushed for this one. I reckon Conte really wanted Porro and suggested him. Yeah, it kind of does make sense when you look at it like that because he was perfect for Conte's system. He really was. Um, but I just I just question whether at that stage Conte was like involved in those kind of transfers because he had, what, a few months left on, on his deal, what, six months left or whatever it may be. It was, I, it's hard to... If you look at it now in hindsight, obviously you can say that, but at the time... There, it was there. Were, um, we were still fairly confident that he was going to be here uh, come the end of the season. Obviously, when you look back at that March, how it all fell apart quite quickly, um, it's easy to say, "Oh, he, he he always knew he was leaving." But at that time, I think uh, we were still going okay in the league. We were through in the Champions League, so it wasn't actually the picture didn't look too bad at that point. Mm. Um, Jed Spence, who obviously came in in the summer, that's a, obviously a cl- that's like the classic example of a, yeah. of a club signing. Levy pushed it because he knew the agent and he and he thought it was a young English player with high potential. Didn't work out because of uh, Jed Spence's attitude. And again, Conte's actions speak uh, uh, actions speak louder than words. And mm. 
In fact, he said it. Didn't he say it in an interview? Yeah. That Spencer's a club signing, so yeah. I don't think you need any more evidence. Destiny or Doggy um, club signing for me because he came in. We actually signed him under Nuno, didn't we? Destiny or Doggy. Then we, then we sold. Then we no, loaned no, him we back. signed him that summer. Then loaned him back. Oh, it was that summer we signed yeah, him. Conte never used him. Um, back to I know. I know. Amazing. Conte and Paratici were very fond of Destiny or Doggy. But I feel like he was like a future signing anyway. So I think it was probably more driven by the club than Conte. I think most signings where you sign them and loan them back, that's going to be pushed by the club because you've got no guarantees if you sign a player and loan them back that the manager that signs them is going to be there. So I think... Especially at Tottenham. Exactly. So I think if a club are going to do that, that has to be pushed by the club rather than the manager himself. Yves Bissouma, um, you know, he was a starring role in the Premier League with Brighton for the past couple of years before that. Um, Conte never really seemed to fancy him that much. Um, always, you know, getting bit part roles, not playing in in the way that Bissouma likes to play. So, for me, um, he's an obvious club signing as well. Definitely, I think the fact that he always preferred Hoybier Bentancur. He always kept saying Bissouma doesn't fit the system. Bissouma doesn't do the right things tactically. Um, the way he used Bissouma. Um, as well suggests to me that obviously Basuma we got because he had a year left on his deal um, he had a brilliant season at Brighton we saw some value in the market I don't think Conte um, if he had his choice would have picked Basuma. so I think um, it was definitely pushed by the club rather than the manager and the last signing from that year was Richarlison coming in as number nine from Everton massive outlay from the club close to 60 million for him um, I think probably yet another club signing that you know Everton <laughs> reportedly wanted 80 million or so, and Daniel Levy said, "All right, we'll go to you. We'll, we'll get a bit of money off, and, and we'll bring a striker in for Conte." Well, um, another player which we took advantage of Everton's PSR rules. They need to sell before June the uh, 30th for that year, and we kind of took advantage of that by getting a supposedly a, um, a cheaper deal than we maybe would have. If we are, uh, if they weren't in trouble, so I think Tottenham saw that. In fact, it was reported that Daniel Levy saw that opportunity. It was reported in the Athletic that he saw that opportunity there, and he kind of took it upon himself to do that deal rather than uh, it be a deal which uh, Conte wanted. And again, he didn't seem to suit what Conte wanted um, when he ever, whenever he played in that front three, he never looked comfortable in that Conte front three. So. I think definitely one pushed by Levy, that one. Mm. And then we move on to last summer, which was Ange Postacoglu's first summer. And I believe the majority of these will be club signings as well, because I don't think that Ange would have known maybe who he wanted or hadn't seen the squad yet. And a lot of these players came in uh, very early on. Uh, we'll start off with, um, I think Vicario was, was the first signing uh, mm -hmm. to come through the door under Ange Postacoglu from Empoli. Do you think he was a club signing? I think actually Ange pushed for it. You I reckon? think listening to what Ange said about it, he said we went for Vicario because I really believed in his mentality and, and I looked at his journey and I believe this guy would fight for Tottenham and like when and when given the opportunity and I believe in his quality. I think Ange actually pushed for this one. In my I think I think with Vicario he might have bought into it after he heard about the player and, and looked into him more. But I think it was pushed originally maybe by Fabio Parat uh, Fabio Paratici. I think the reality is in this day and age... Uh, That's what that happens it's, anyway. It's a collaboration, yeah, of course. The club are going to give him a list of kind of players who are, maybe have got interest, who they've got feelers from, and Ange can have his input. But I reckon Ange, from the list, I reckon he looked at Vicar and pushed for him, I reckon. That's my, that's my uh, thoughts. Two youngsters that came in, Alejo Valiz and Ashley Phillips. I mean, when you're looking at young players coming through, I mean... <laughs> They have to be club signings, right? I don't think Ange Postagoglu is uh, saying, all right, go out there and get me Valise and Ashley Phillips. If he, and, and he didn't even want to use Phillips at, at the start. Yeah, I think these ones are definitely pushed by the club. Uh, Manuel Solomon, free transfer from Shakhtar Donetsk uh, on the back of the, uh, of the war. Uh, we know, I mean, that is 100% surely a club signing. There is, yeah. there is no more signing that we've probably made that, has, that, that stinks of Daniel Levy more than this. Well, there were reports that we were going to go for him even before Ange came. Mm, so true. that tells me that Ange didn't have too much input in that one. Yeah. Uh, Radu 
uh, Radu Dragusin, who came in in the January for 25 million. I mean, it, we needed a centre back because we sold Davidson Sanchez after the transfer window shut, which left us so light at, at the centre back options. Do you think? I think Radu as well was one maybe driven by uh, a, a Paratici uh, in the background, but maybe Ange Postecoglou was well on board with it as well. I think Ange again. I don't think Ange would have pushed it because we know we needed a centre back. He had six months to um, to kind of look at his options and find a centre-back. We moved for him fairly early in the January window as well, so we seem certain on that one. And um, Radu had the characteristics that we want in our Ange Postecoglou system. So in terms of a centre-back that we're looking for, uh, and in terms of their age, I reckon Ange looked at that and think, this is a guy I can work with. I reckon he pushed for it. James Madison. I feel like Ange could have pushed for James Madison. Um, I think the way that Madison plays is very much in line with the way Ange likes to play. And also we heard from Madison when he joined us how much of an influence Ange Postacoglu was in joining the club. So I feel like Ange might have been, out of everyone on this list, I think he was pushed uh, by Ange the most. Yeah, and we needed a number 10 because that's massive in Ange's system. So looking at number 10s, I reckon definitely Ange pushed for Madison for sure. Brendan Johnson, what do you reckon about him? Came in right at the end of the window, didn't he? Yeah, right at the end. Um big money obviously again a, a young player I think Ange might have pushed for it I'll tell you why because I reckon Ange saw Brennan as a player who could really play that right wing role um, uh, play the way he wants it to be played and you can see how Brennan plays it he, he plays in a different way to how he kind of played at um, Forest. he's very much now more of a touchline winger than a, than a forward and I think that's what um, Ange had in his mind when, when signing Brennan. So I feel like um, Ange pushed for Brennan, in a way. And uh, last but not least, Timo Werner on loan. Um, you say Mickey van der Ven as well. Oh, sorry, Mickey van der Ven. Yeah, I think Mickey van der Ven is actually an Ange signing. I think um, you look at Mickey um, and the kind of what we need at the back, the pace that he has is so important in Ange's system. The, the attributes that Mickey van der Ven has is just so suited to the way Ange likes to play. And I think, like, I think this is an Ange signing. See, it's difficult to say because what, how we're judging this, right, is a, um, we're basically saying any player who the club have bought which doesn't fit the system is probably a club signing and any player who the club has bought who does fit the system is probably a manager signing because he fits the system the manager wants. But it's hard to know whether they are club signings or the club are just getting better at club signings, if you know what I mean, and they were just bad before and now they're getting better at it. I actually, I actually think you're right there and I, I actually think for this particular transfer window, I do think the club um, got much better in signifying what the manager wants. Whereas but, before they like put four players who didn't fit the system and went ahead with it, and they were just bad at doing their job. Yeah. Whereas now maybe it's a similar process; they're yeah. just getting better at it. But I feel like maybe Ange, like, I think Ange had less of an influence on this window that we're talking about than maybe the influence that he's going to have on this window coming up. But I do feel like players like Mickey Van Der Ven and James Madison, he would have pushed big for. Yeah, I reckon so. Now look, you see how. Um, how big Van der Ven is to the way we play, so I think Ange would have seen that that his pace and and the way and he's so um, he's pretty much built that whole defence around Van der Ven essentially, uh, how his pace uh, in behind and how how many recoveries he makes, and I think that was a plan going into the season, uh, and that was literally from day one um, that that how we've built that defence around Van der Ven. So I reckon Ange definitely looked at that and. I don't think it's a, it's a surprise, it's a coincidence that mm. our defence has been built around what Van der Ven can offer. Yeah. So I think the main takeaway from this is that the majority of transfers that we've brought in in the last four years, I think, have been all club signings. Not all, but the majority. Yeah, and I think the difference is it was a big problem for Mourinho and, and Conte because they needed, they needed specific things, but. When, when you're a Mourinho or Conte, right, and you're managing their kind of philosophy and their way of playing, it's very important that they get the players that can deliver success immediately and to very specific specifications. Whereas with Ange, I'm not, I'm not saying that he doesn't need specific things, but I feel like if you just get players who uh, have certain attributes, he can kind of mould them and he can get them to fit the to fit how he, how he wants to play. Where under Conte Marini, it's all about winning right now. It's all about doing anything to win. It's all about building a team that can challenge immediately. And maybe 
when you when you do that and then you're suggesting players to them who don't really fit what they're trying to do that becomes a massive problem mm. whereas a, I think there's a couple of things that's happened under Ange first of all he just needs maybe specific attributes and second of all um, second of all he's, he can work with what, he, what he's got a lot more and we've got better at identifying players that fit the system rather than before I feel like for example like Basuma like Spence it's like we felt like let's just get um, a good players rather than players that fit the system and it has, that didn't really work but I, I also we feel wanted. like I also feel like the earlier transfer windows like what you're saying under Nuno under Conte under Mourinho I feel like the club would have just brought in these club signings without even like consulting the manager and just being like look here you go these, these players work with it but I feel like this window just gone, as much as Ange, I don't think, had too much of an influence on picking the individual players apart from the two that we spoke about, I feel like he still would have okayed the players and he still would have had a say in whether yes, no, yes, no. Yeah, but I, I feel like it's no coincidence that a lot of the players, I'm looking at the system that we play and a lot of the players that we've signed last summer have been really f good fits for that system. That's what I'm saying, yeah. And and and, and before it wasn't. I but I don't think that the I, I, I don't think Tottenham signed any player where the manager has no input. I don't believe that at all. I I, I don't believe it, that that's a case where. Do you think Conte had an input on Spence and Bissouma and, and these kind of players? I don't think we signed a player without the manager like at least um, okaying it or giving. If a manager's like hardline no, like I don't think a manager turns up the next day and there's a new player in the door and like he has no idea what's going on. I don't think that 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 happens. I think maybe it's a case of like. Conte saying I need a right back right and Spurs are like okay we can get this deal for Spence done and Conte's like well I mean I'd rather have you know a better fit for my system and there, then Spurs are like look he's a good price you're just going to have to work with him kind of thing I think that maybe happens but I don't, I don't think like Spurs sign a player with no input from the manager I feel like you, you talk about someone like Joe Roden for instance coming in like and obviously Conte wanted Skriniar. I mean, Mourinho wanted Skriniar, right? And he's going, Skriniar, 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 get me someone of top quality that I can use. And then it rumbles on, it rumbles on, it rumbles on. We bring in Joe Roden and they go, all right, Mourinho, we've got Joe Roden. Do you want him or not? And he's like, oh, fuck it. All right, whatever. Yeah, probably at that point, I would say, like, the window's closed and they're like, Roden or nothing. And they're like, okay, Roden. Yeah. He's like, okay, it. But they're definitely more pushed by the club because they couldn't get what he actually wanted. So I definitely think that happens. But I don't think there's signings where a man is like no, and they just sign him anyway. It's like why why would why would Conte ever okay Basuma if he knows he's not a fit for his system? And because he knows we, he knows he's a good player, right? And he knows that um, he knows what the qualities he does have. And maybe Tottenham like talked to him and be like, look, he's 25 million. You saw what you can do at Brighton. Can you work with him? And maybe Conte's like. I can, you know, I can try and work with him. I can see if I can fit him in. And he tried and then, for one day and that was it. And then, and then he brings him in and I, it didn't work, obviously. But I don't think like Tottenham present Basuma and Conte's like, no. And Spurs like, well, you're signing him anyway. Mm. He's probably like, maybe I could, I'll try, you know, oh, yeah, I can try and see if I can work with him. I probably can try and fit him into my system. And then it came and it, he can do it. The summer, Pochettino's last summer, right? With Undombele, La Celso and Sessegnon. Mm -hmm. I feel like that's probably the last summer where none of them have been club signings. I don't think any of those were club signings, whether you look at Ndombele, Lo Celso and Cessna. And I reckon all three of those were pushed by Pochettino. And it makes sense because like, by that time, Pochettino just got to the Champions League final. We've just been in, what, two title races a couple of years before that. And Pochettino earned the right to maybe choose those signings. And mm -hmm. that's probably the last summer that you look at and being like, well, that, that's the last summer that was run by a manager. <laughs> Potentially. I mean... Um it, summers before that you can definitely see a lot of club signings there yeah. as well but um, I think that summer Poch definitely had a lot of input because we wanted a natural replacement for Dembele we got them Dembele obviously Lo Celso was a fellow, fellow Argentinian player who we knew very well Betis had a great season um, Cecil was a really good young player who you know he, we know that Pochettino likes to mould these young players um, I feel like if anyone was going to be a club signing probably was Cecil out of all those players but um, I reckon Poch probably had some input in that as well so yeah you're probably right about that and uh, the two that came in in January that year was Steven Bergvine and Gedson Fernandez. I mean, those stink club signings I reckon, as well. I reckon um, Mourinho probably knew about Gedson 
in my opinion, because he was at Benfica. He probably was, he was a Portuguese player from the Portuguese market. I reckon that one just flopped, but I reckon Mourinho might have known about him. I reckon mm. Bergwijn, we know, was a club signing because Mourinho was desperate for a striker because Kane was out for a while and so was Son, and he was banging on about we need a striker. And uh, the whole window was, was looked, we tried to get a striker, and we couldn't get one in, and we ended up getting Bergwijn, who was a winger who... Um, Mourinho um, said in an interview oh the club had been tracking for a while and they saw an opportunity in this sign him so was definitely a club signing I, I don't buy the Gedson Fernandes thing yeah I think he, Mourinho might have known about him but I still think that was driven by the club and um, at the beginning of that window it was all we were all going to go for Bruno Fernandes and we ended up with Gedson Fernandes <laughs> yeah 100% um, wrong Fernandes so, so Ma- oh. Mourinho was like get me Fernandes <laughs> and he meant Bruno. And then he was like, all right, here you go. Here's Fernandez. <laughs> and it's Gensen <laughs> Fernandez. But look, that is um, our episode on club signings. So it doesn't, it doesn't um, make for good reading when you look at those transfer windows in terms of how many club signings they were, how much man- the input the manager has. Obviously, it's all speculation. We don't know for sure. So let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. Do you agree with us that the majority of these were club signings and not driven by the manager? Be excited to hear your thoughts. Like, subscribe and comment. And as always, come on you Spurs.